start in about two minutes. Thank you. Let's start. Maybe we can begin with a short prayer. So let's remember that we are the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for gathering us this afternoon. Thank you for a whole day of sharing traditions, sharing beliefs, sharing values. We hope that beyond this day, we get to live out all the things that we have learned from the Ateneo in the past and everything that we relearn today. And so we continue to live for your greater glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So good afternoon, everyone. Hi. My name is Mir De Los Santos. I'm from the Office of Mission and Identity here in Ateneo. And thank you for attending today's Ignatian Festival. How many of you have you have been here since this morning? Meron ba? Wow, okay. <laughs> Good job, okay, <laughs> since this morning. So, you all know that this is Ignatian Festival, and our theme for this year is Lahing Loyola para sa Kapwa. And this is actually the Media, Culture, and Arts Panel 1. So, we have our three distinguished speakers with us to share their stories of being Ateneans this afternoon. Baka napurga na kayo with this, but just to run down our objectives for today in terms of the Ignatian Festival is... First, to, of course, uh, look back and share in terms of the spirit and tradition of Ignatius and the Jesuits. We all know that the Ateneo is run by Ignatius spirit, and so Ignatian spirituality and its dimensions of leadership, prayer, discernment, mission, and social involvement. The second thing is that we were gathered here today to have a discussion, dialogue, and reflection on how Ignatian spirituality is lived out in the real world, in different spe spheres like business, government, and media, like our panel speakers today, the challenges of living it out, its gifts and possibilities in making a difference in society. And then last, as our objective, the identity of the Atenean as Ignatian and how the alumni and their networks together can do more in their respective sectors and spheres of involvement. So I hope this day has been very fruitful for all of us. It's been very exciting since this morning. So I'm sure this afternoon's panel will give us more things to think about and reflect on as Ateneans having roamed this, not necessarily these halls, kasi ako hindi ako dito na grade school, <laughs> okay, but at least the college. So that's one thing that we all share. So I would be very much honored to introduce our speakers for today. We have three for this panel, and they all come from different areas of media. And they were given a very difficult question to answer. <laughs> Simple yet difficult. So they were asked to answer the question, and they will share with us their answers. How has my Ateneo and Jesuit education and spirituality helped me contribute to nation building? Maybe something we can also think about. <laughs> okay? So we'll give them a chance to talk about their answer, their responses, and their life experiences in terms of their response to the question for around 20 minutes. And then we'll open the floor for questions. That good? Okay. So let's proceed without further ado to our first speaker. Okay. We're very proud to have with us 
Mr. John Neri, who graduated from the Ateneo de Manila University in 1985 with a degree in AB Philosophy. He's a senior editor and opinion columnist at the Philippine Daily Inquirer with responsibility for editorial special projects such as the Inquirer Presidential Debate and the Inquirer Senate Forum. His investigative reports have won a Catholic Mass Media Award and also he is the author of the book Revolutionary Spirit, Jose Rizal in Southeast Asia. He has been a Jefferson Fellow at the East-West Center in Honolulu, a Visiting Research Fellow at the Institute of Southeast Asian Studies in Singapore, and the Naian Fellow at Harvard University. Let's give a round of applause to Mr. John Neri. Thank you, Mir. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I was debating whether to uh, wing this or to write something. And uh, in the end, I decided to uh, err on the side of prudence. So I wrote something down. Um, I don't think it's going to take uh, 20 minutes. I came late to journalism, but I still count myself as part of that post-Marcos generation of journalists who do not see themselves as being in the nation-building business. Marcos had so thoroughly corrupted the idea of developmental journalism that many journalists today still react instinctively negatively to the notion that journalism has a role to play in nation building. Readership engagement, audience development, citizen journalism, crowdsourcing, these are buzzwords, concepts, initiatives I am deeply involved in at the Philippine Daily Inquirer. But I would be loath to describe them as forms of nation building. The newspaper I am privileged to work for is certainly engaged in a continuing attempt to build a reading public, to protect a public square open to all opinion, to do its share in defending the freedoms and the democracy we regained with difficulty. But none of this, in my view, qualifies as nation building because the state is not involved. I realize that the term nation building can be defined to include all the virtuous trends I pointed to and exclude the participation of the state. But I personally would have a problem with it and, uh, uh, and I suppose others like me would too. Perhaps it would take another generation of journalists less vulnerable to the formative trauma of the Marcus years <coughs> to embrace the new definition. But we are here to talk about the impact on me, of Ignatius of Loyola, not Ferdinand of Batak. <laughs> Let us then, for the moment, accept the second element of journalism listed by Bill Kovach and Tom Rosenstiel as, as a reasonable equivalent for nation building. That second element of journalism is formulated as follows. Journalism's first loyalty is to citizens. How does Ignatian spirituality inform the deep loyalty that I do feel to the citizens of our beautiful, benighted republic? In spite of my late start in journalism, I have had more than a few chances to try and answer this very question. Allow me then the decidedly non-Ignatian practice of quoting my own writing <laughs> and refer to three moments or points for reflection. In 2006, I wrote about the contradictory habits of mind that characterized my generation of Ateneo de Manila high school graduates. And I quote, there were the habits of mind that we learned in our corner of the world, a sense of constant competition, but frustrated by an inability to deal with conflict a sense of easy excellence, but shadowed by an air of entitlement, a sense of practical virtue, 
but limited by a marked distaste for dirty politics. The reality was clear even to those of us who were only beginning to understand that the, that the dictator's promised new society was in fact still the old one, only with new faces. We were children of privilege, sons of tradition. If we had fully understood what was being asked of us then, to become, in the language of the day, agents of change, to take part in the transformation of the tradition we had inherited, we would have been overcome with fear and trembling. Words from the journal St. Ignatius kept from time to time come readily to mind now. Sometimes the masses, he said, overwhelmed him, and then this stoic warrior would confide in his diary, tears, more tears, end of quote. In other words, at the end of our high school years, which is to say 1981, <laughs> we were incompletely Ignatian. Those contradictions I described were very much the texture of our young lives. Now, I would be the last to say that more than 30 years after high school, my Ignatian formation is now complete. But... Sa awa ng Diyos at ni San Ignacio, there has been some improvement. Where did the modest growth come from? I learned from a succession of great teachers in college. I've already devoted a couple of columns to these wonderful lasting influences. Today, let me only summarize the Ignatian sources of their teaching. In 2009, I asked, what, in my admittedly partial view, makes teachers great? I say apex, A-P-E-X. And now I quote, they pay attention to a student, that's A, take a sincere interest in their lives. The Jesuits have a term for this, cura personalis. They encourage P, possibility. They have the gift of seeing through the clutter of dreams and frustrations and hormones and projects that surround a student and discover true potential. Not least, they set an example, hence the EX. They point out the good that people have done. They show proof that excellence is fact, not asymptotic fantasy. They offer themselves as examples of commitment deeply dedicated to their work. But I have also learned much from St. Ignatius's gift for phrase making. He was not a good writer in the sense of style, but he could certainly turn a phrase. Just this week, I wrote about a revealing letter St. Ignatius wrote to three Jesuits on their way to the Council of Trent. So this will take us back all the way to 1546. And I, again, if you will allow me one last uh, pleasure of quoting myself. <laughs> if there is a passage in this list of instructions that strikes me as classic Ignatius with a kind of energetic precision and brevity that even the acerbic Spanish historian Antonio Astrain would approve of, it is the following. At the end of the letter's second section, Helping Souls, Almost as though Ignatius remembered something he should have included in the first section, we read, and then now I'm quoting St. Ignatius, while on the one hand, when laying down definite opinions, it is well, as has been said above, to speak late and to speak little. On the other hand, when it is a question of bringing souls to a sense of their spiritual good, it is profitable to speak at length with method, love, and feeling. Method, love, and feeling. What a resonant phrase, steeped in both the sense of purpose that St. Ignatius was known for and his history of hard-earned practical experience. Is there a better way to sum up not only the Jesuit approach to writing that we all learned in our classrooms, even as far back as 1977 when I graduated from this grade school, but also the Ignatian approach to life itself. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Uh, short but sweet. And thank you for all the quotes, including the ones from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. enriching. If you have questions for Sir John, just please hold on to them. So we'll finish first with all the other speakers, OK? So our second speaker, uh, the youngest in our panel of speakers, <laughs> uh, I've known him from the music industry of the Ateneo, okay, but he's been more than that. Okay. Uh, John Paolo, or John Pao, as we most know him, graduated from Ateneo de Manila in 2005 with a degree in AB philosophy. Mm. <laughs> okay. John Pao promotes arts and music. He is the music director of the Ninoy and Cory Aquino Foundation Music Ministry. And if you go to the Jesu regularly to for masses, he's also the musical director of the Church of the Jesu here in Ateneo. He is also the former, he was also the former executive director of Hero Square Heritage Incorporated, which was able to bring a total of 37,000 private and public school students in Intramuros to experience history through street theater. And right now, he is the managing director of Magna Anima Foundation, which is involved in the training formation of seven public schools. And also, he's not yet busy enough, he finds time to produce a music album for public school teachers. So let's call on Mr. John Paul Reyes. John Paolo. Magta timer lang po ako. Uh, good afternoon po. Uh, I am Jam Pao. No? Uh, para po matandaan ng mga estudyante ko, it's like Shopa with a Jam. Jam Pao. No? Uh, para po matandaan nating lahat. No? Uh, magpapakilala po muna. Ako po siguro yung pinaka, nandiliit nga ako ngayon dito, maski malaki ko no? uh, sa mga kasama ko. No? But uh, allow me to share, uh, no? we, have, we share similar stories. No? And allow me to share my story no? uh, with all of you. Um, Ako po ay isang teacher by heart. No? Uh, nagturo po ako ng, uh, for seven years sa uh, Ateneo High School. Ang tinuro ko po ay... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> natatanggal. Okay lang po. Ayan. Ang tinuro ko po ay Christian Life Education. No? I, I taught Tulong Dunong uh, for fourth-year high school students and Christian, uh, and Christian morality to third-year high school students. No? Ang first love ko po talaga ay pagtuturo. No, uh, yan po. No? At ngayon, kasulukuyan, nabanggit din, ako rin po ay tumutulong sa Ninoy and Cory Aquino Foundation. Uh, kami po ay umiikot sa buong Pilipinas to conduct uh, leadership seminars. Pero iba po kasi the slant is spiritual leadership. Uh, spiritual leadership like the legacy of Ninoy and Cory. I'll go to that later po. No? And ako rin po ay ito isang pamilya. No? Uh, uh, you call them the Hero Square family. No? Uh, they're, they're a theater group also. We, we let history come alive. No? Imagine you go to Fort Santiago in Intramuros and you meet Jose Rizal and Josephine Bracken in person. No? At yung mga estudyante na pumupunta, manghang-mangha, no? nakita nila, that's Rizal! No? Uh, at yun po, no? uh, yan po ay sama-samang artists po yan from the Cultural Center, from PETA, from uh, UP Theater. No? Uh, sama-sama po kami no? in in coming up and promoting history, heroism, and heritage. And also, uh, now I'm involved with uh, teaching public school teachers. No? Uh, umiikot po ako, apat po yung hawak ko, no? the lupang pangako in Payatas Elementary School, Justice Cecilia Munoz Palma High School also in Payatas, uh, Malolos Elementary School in Bulacan, and the third is Kamuning Elementary School. Uh, we teach and form teachers to build caring communities in their schools. Yung concepto po ni San Ignacio na cura personalis. We want to bring that to the public schools. No? Why? Because we believe that the lasting, the, the memory and the lasting truth that will remain with students uh, is the care and concern that we give them. At ako po ay naatasan. No? Uh, uh, ito po yung tanong, how has your Ateneo Jesuit Ignatian Education and Spirituality help you contribute to nation building? No? Um, ako po ay 30 years old pa lang, no? at sabi ko nga parang Milo, no? uh, great things start from small beginnings, no? at little by little po. No? And when I look back at my Ateneo education, 
isa po yung sa pinakapaborito kong guro, no? uh, si Padre Ferriols. No? Ang lagi niyang sinasabi sa amin, dumilat ka at marami kang makikita. Paano ako naapektuhan ng, ng Ignatian spirituality? Dumilat ka at marami kang makikita. And sa, sa tingin ko, kinuha niya yan kay San Ignacio sapagkat siya ay anak ni Ignacio. At for Ignatius, diba, sabi niya, it is finding God in all things. May kwento, no, anecdote. No? Uh, si Ignacio raw, uh, si Saint Ignatius raw ay talagang iyakin. No? At one point, binawala na siya ng doktor dahil huwag ka nang umiyak kasi iyak siya ng iyak. Why? Naglalakad lang siya, for example, at nakakita siya ng tatlong bato sa sahig. No? Paiiyak na siya. Bakit? Kasi nakikita niya doon yung Holy Trinity. Literally, no? Uh, finding God in all things. No? And kung meron man pong isang significant significant lesson that the Ignatian tradition has imparted, no? uh, for me, it is finding God in all things. And it beckons me to look back. No? Dumilat ka at maraming makikita at tumingin uli sa buhay ko. And I have three points. No? Why do I contribute in nation building? Why in my, in my, my simple and struggling ways I want to serve? Because of three points. When I look back, no, finding God in my own life, I find three important realities. Finding God in all things, I find three important things in my life. This is the rhyme and reason why I serve. The first is an experience of being loved. I am love. Second is an experience of I want to love back. And how can I love back? I will serve. Yun po. Yan po siguro yung dynamic sa puso ko, no? Kung ba't ko ginagawa ang lahat ng ito, no? Um, sige po, uh, very shortly, no? I, I, let me, ako po ay nag, sa grade school po ako, 97, Ateneo High School, 2001, and I graduated Ateneo College in uh, 2005, no? Uh, very significant po yung Ateneo High School year ko, to year 2000. Bakit po? Kasi po, yung taon na yon, uh, my dad needed to undergo dialysis, no? Uh, Um, at yung dialysis niya po, um, ano po, yung isang kidney niya hindi niya gumagana, the other kidney, 90% functioning na lang po. No? And he, he needed to undergo dialysis thrice a week. And I remember that time, it was really expensive. No? Uh, he would go to the hospital, no? okay po. No? And slowly, of course, thrice a week, and then the maintaining meds. No? And I remember one vial would cost us 4,000 pesos para lang po sa every day for my dad no and slowly no ubus po lahat ng finances tam from a big house dati kung dalawang quarter pounder isang quarter pounder na lang nakakain ko no something like that no and to the point that uh when 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 i i was in third year high school and i was beginning my enrollment wala pong pang enroll no and i distinctly my mom writing a uh, promissory note to the principal guaranteeing that i will pay at the end of the year no um Uh, fast forward, that was um, June, come March, the end of the year, kinakabahan po ako. Kasi sa high school, at the end of the school year, may isang blackboard yan. Nandyan po, accounts payable. No? Uh, nakapaskil po ang pangalan mo and your accounts payable. No? Uh, alam ko pong hindi nakabayad yung nanay ko. At kinakabahan ako, sabi ko, anong mukhang iaharap ko? Accounts payable, Reyes, John Paolo, 65,000 pesos. No? And, baka ako lang yung nandoon no number one. no uh, and i was so embarrassed no um and then the day came i went to the board and i looked at my name reyes san paulo accounts payable zero sabi ko ay may mali no uh, and then i went to the cashier sabi ko ma'am student number 012376 ma'am paki-check lang po yung accounts payable no uh, and then accounts payable sir sabi niya Bayad na po. Sabi ko, sino pong nagbayad? Eh, malay ko po, sir. Basta sa computer, bayad na. No? Uh, and true enough, bayad na po. I asked my mom, Mom, nagbayad ka ba? Anak, hindi. Bayad na rin yung tuition. No, and sa tuwa, my nanay was, was crying. No? Um, uh, until now, hindi ko po alam kung sino yung nagbayad ng tuition fee ko. At isa po yun sa dahilan, no? Uh, Number one, why I felt, alam mo yung sasabit ka na, pero sinasalo ka ng Diyos. That was a concrete moment. And I became a teacher and a servant. 
primarily because of that experience. Until now, I don't know. No? And sabi ko, I will devote my, my life into teaching, into ministering through arts and through music because I know that there is a God who loves me. First story. Um, ito po isang kanta. No? Ako po ay, uh, love, may love affair po ako sa music. Para po dun, tinaturo po ito sa grade 2 nung nandito ako. No? At ang sabi po, it only takes a spark to get a fire burning. And soon all those around can warm up in its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you'd share His love to everyone you want to pass it on. And in my young life, no, uh, and when I look back no, uh, at, at those moments, finding God in all things, and when I look back at Ineo High School, year 2000, I know that my God was alive. My God is alive. My God is loving me. And dahil doon, no, nakaka... And I want to love back. Uh, during moments and encounters like that, no, and the challenge is, I want to love back. And how can I love back? No? And I look at myself, ano bang meron ako uh, in this uh, ngayon na hawa ko? No? Um, and ito po yung loves ko. No? Teaching, music, and the arts. Sabi ko, I will love you back through teaching, through music, and through the arts. Um, music. No? Uh, ngayon po, uh, kung magpo-promote. No? Mamaya po, may magko-concert sa Jisook at kung gusto nyo pong manood, it is the Ninoy and Cory Aquino Foundation Music Ministry. No? And, and we go around no, proclaiming and, 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 and talking to young leaders, no? talking about the legacy of Ninoy and Cory and what is that leadership quality. It is spiritual leadership. It is grounded in spirituality. And we go around no, with our music. Sabi nga po nung high school teacher ko si Mr. Pagsi, no? when the heart is full, the overflow is music. Kapag ang puso ay puno, ang digwak ay musika. And we go around, no? And, and umaabat po kami hanggang last week po, nasa bukid nun kami, no? At kinantahan namin yung mga Carmelite sisters in Malay Balay. No? Uh, it's an ex it was an experience kasi cloistered po sila, no? Hindi po kami sanay na makita sila, nakatago sila. And then they requested, can you sing after Mass? No? And we, we sang and we had an encounter with them. At habang po kumakanta kami, umiiyak sila, no? Uh, and when, when you see reactions like those, sabi mo, you know that you are being used. Ikaw ay, hindi ikaw yun. You are a vehicle. You are an instrument. Um, Second po ay ang Hero Square, no? Makikita niyo po sila dito, no? Uh, we let history come alive, no? Pero hindi lang po history. We want to teach heroism. We want to teach heritage, no? And last year, no, our our former Intramuros administrator is here, no? Si Mr. Capistrano, no? Uh, hi sir. Got good to see you, sir, no? Uh, he really supported us to bring in public school students to Hero Square. We were able to bring two, four thousand students to Hero Square. Imagine nyo po, Universal Studio. Diba? You see actors running around. Ito po ay, yan po, no? makita nyo, Katipunan, si Rizal, si Josephine Bracken. Mamaya po, makikita nyo sila. But when you see their reaction, when you see their reaction, and you, when we ask them, what will your legacy be? If you were to write your own valedictory, like Jose Rizal, your own mi ultimo adios, what will your legacy be? And they are stunned into silence. Then in Hero Square B, we believe that we are making an impact in the future of these public school students. Uh, iba po ang karanasan. Pag private kasi, di ba, parang well, nanonood sila.